All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, I got some new jokes for y'all, for you guys tonight, right? Excited? <laughs> Woo! I'll start off with the oldie but a goody. Good goody. Oh no, I've been drinking too. <laughs> uh, see, I really hate Girl Scouts. Yeah. See, when I was little, my dad left us for the Girl Scout leader. It was totally not his fault. She needed her homewrecking badge, and he was only trying to help. But it's affected me for the rest of my life. Uh, now, every time I see a Girl Scout, I just punch that bitch right in the face. It's defensive. <laughs> then I buy five boxes of Thin Mints, because that's just delicious. <laughs> they taste like abandonment. Mm. I hope you like puns. <laughs> I'm being distracted by that case of Shiner right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't punch me in my face. Someone just said, give her a Shiner. <laughs> it can be rough, but not too rough. Um, I went to go see that new Sarah Palin movie, Undefeated, right? Should have been called Uncompleted, but, you know, who's counting? <laughs> But I heard that Michelle Bachman didn't want to be outdone. Um, she's coming out with a movie, too, but it's called Manchurian Candidate. <laughs> so before the movie, they're playing all these previews, right? And I saw a preview for, I, don't, I heard this was coming out, and I didn't believe it, Battleship the Movie. <laughs> oh, my God. Someone should really check it with Liam Neeson, because he's making some poor choices, right? <laughs> You never want to walk out of the movie and like go, well, you know, I preferred the board game. <laughs> uh, there, another preview was Cowboys, uh, Cowboys and Aliens, right? Yeah, yeah. They picked the right article because if, if it was Cowboys or Aliens, I want to go see that movie, right? Cowboys versus Aliens, I might. Um, but I think that that movie could be best summed up as you got Han Solo in my James Bond. You got James Bond in my Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> movie looks awesome. Um, I also saw a preview for Spy Kids 4D. Yeah, yeah, they needed a fourth one. Um, it's worse than Harry Potter, I think. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying those kids are like 30 years old now and they're playing teenagers is all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> But everyone knows the fourth dimension is time, right? So they must have called it 4D because time stops when you're in there. Lasts forever. <laughs> um. <laughs> but my favorite preview was Twilight and the new movie's coming out in 3D, right? That's really exciting. But don't worry, fans. The characters are still one-dimensional. That's right, fuck Bella Swan, all right. This is my kind of audience. <laughs> uh, I've always wanted to see a 3D movie, but I can't. Um, every time I try to go, some kids uh, punch me, call me six eyes, and take my popcorn money. <laughs> hmm. But you know, the Twilight movies got me thinking a lot of vamp about vampires lately, like some really important questions, like, can a vampire get AIDS? And the answer is yes, but only if it gets bitten by a priest. <laughs> Holy AIDS. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. What else do I have that's new? Oh, I was watching television the other day. And I was watching 19 Kids and Counting because I'm classy. And uh, they were talking about, the mom was talking about their internet usage. Like they limit how much time their kids can be on the internet all day. And this woman with 19 kids had the nerve to look into the camera and say, well, everything in moderation. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, it seems like if you loosened your internet policy that maybe you'd have less kids, right? Pornography, okay. <laughs> um, I was watching Food Network because apparently only all I do is watch television. And they informed me that Scandinavians invented open-faced sandwiches. Yeah. Because no one's ever had one piece of bread before, apparently. Or had toast. Okay, that's a new one. Well, moving on. Let's go on. 
Um, hmm. Sorry, I'm looking, but I'm trying to remember some stuff. Oh, sometimes stereotypes are so, so ingrained in you, like you can't give them up even though you are faced with the reality. For example, like I have been to London and I have been to their cities and their museums and their castles and all this stuff, and I am convinced that everything takes place at Hogwarts there. <laughs> like I watched the royal wedding to see Dumbledore. And it didn't happen. <laughs> one or two. Oh, the first one with the, what's her face? With the booty. Yeah. Kate. <laughs> hmm, apparently I didn't understand that. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. My husband's a real beefcake, heavy on the cake. He's got a belly. Um, we're in marriage counseling right now. He says it's, I cheat and I beat him. I think he should just get better at Halo. He needs to learn those maps like the back of my hand, is all I'm saying. <laughs> hmm. We're both writers. Um, he writes fiction and stuff. Like, he's a real writer. He's been published and stuff. And I'm just a comedian. I do this for free on stages, right? So it's not even a fair contest. Like, we fight over email because we're passive-aggressive, too. And he sent me an email the other day. It said, Megan, your thoughts are like oysters. They're slightly slimy to the touch and potentially hazardous to the health. I know. Like, what the fuck are you supposed to say to that? Right? And it took me eight hours, but I came up with the perfect comeback. Um, yeah, well, you have a small dick. <laughs> I win. He's also an English major, you know, so he's trying to get me to better myself through literature. I don't like reading, but he had me start with Moby Dick, and that book is appropriately named because that book is long and hard. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, if there's a Starbucks in the second chapter, that's a warning. <laughs> oh, some people have read the book in this audience. I love you. Uh, you know, I really did try, though. Like, I went and got the book on tape read by Sir Patrick Stewart. I'm like, if Captain Picard can read it, surely I can listen to it. Right? That's a good thought process. Uh, but halfway through, he said, fuck it, and the rest was just Led Zeppelin lyrics. <laughs> Best book on tape ever. <laughs> um, we're, we've been married for five years now, and it's getting to the point where all our religious friends think that we should be having kids. And I had one of my religious friends come up to me and go, Megan, I'm just praying that you and Stephen get pregnant. And I said, oh, that's funny. I thought you were pro-life. <laughs> Can't tell if that was approval or, <laughs> or I'm going to be stoned later. <laughs> I hang out with a lot of guy friends. It's, it's fun. Like, I, they do things like girls would never do, right? Like, we went to the strip club, and they were all fawning over this stripper named, named Fantasy. She had fake boobs, a fake tan, and a weave. That bitch should have been called plagiarism. Right? And strippers need to come up with better names. Like, if I was a stripper, my name would be Onomatopoeia. Because I make you want to go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Ow, right? <laughs> uh, my favorite thing they do, though, is they play this game called Clam Slam. Oh, damn it, I ruined the punchline. Okay, pretend that didn't happen. They play this game called Cock Knock, right? Where they punch each other in the nuts, right? Because there's nothing funnier in the than blood in your urine stream, apparently. Like, girls never play that, would they? Ma'am, would... No. Girls play Clam Slam. There it is. Now it's not funny! But I... <laughs> Thank you! But I suck at that game because I am a pussy. I had to go that extra mile. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to end on this one. I'll bring Russ up to the stage. Um, I am a fortunate individual in that I have two jobs, because I'm awesome. And on the weekends, I work at the Starbucks drive-thru, right? And what most people don't know is that there's a camera in the drive-thru, and I can see right into your car. I'm just letting y'all know right now. That's, that is a fact that is not a joke. <laughs> I can see you pick your nose or whatever you're doing in there. Well, one morning, it's like 5.30 in the morning, we just opened, and I hear the little bing in the headphone, and I'm turning to help. I'm like, how can I help you? I look in the monitor, and there is a girl giving a guy a blowjob. Yeah. Best part of waking up is a blowjob in your truck. No. 
I mean, I know Starbucks is expensive, ladies, but uh, this is an in and out burger, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so they pull up to the window, right? And I'm, I'm trying not to make eye contact with these people in this car, right? And uh, I see him reach out the window, and I think he has money, and he thinks I have his coffee. Yeah, so we kind of meet in the middle, and we're holding hands out the drive through window, and I don't know what to do. I freak out, so I just say, um, so, uh, do you come here often? <laughs> All right, guys, that's my time. Let's bring Russ up to the stage. Thank you.